Howdy folks, old Buster coming to you again. Little sister-in-law here, Miss Gail come in. She got that real estate company, you know. She'll sell you something anytime and give you a deal if you need her. Gail Polo Realty, that's the name of it. Well, the Paul boys, that's his story this week. Buster and the boys spent the night up on Big LaGrua doing some hog hunting. The next morning there was a hoary frost and some hot coffee and a pan full of fried biscuits, bacon and eggs and some sorghum molasses and bacon grease was right tasty early that morning. Well, up come the Fernie old boys, Festus, Fergus, and Farrell. They's the ones that is cross-eyed, cock-eyed, and wall-eyed, you know. Well, Farrell hollered up to the camp and said they had smelled the fixings and wondered if and if it was Buster and the boys. Well, Buster hollered on back and said it was them and to come on in to camp. Well, after giving the Fernie old boys some grub and coffee, Walter asked them what brung them up this way. Well, Festus said they was to meet up with their cousins, the Poe boys. Huzzabelle, Cuzzabelle, and Matuzzabelle. Their pa was Ruzzabelle. They was triplets too on their mall side. Well, Jesse said them boys sure is a mess and a handful of the boot. They is known to have them multiple flanges, six fingers on each hand and webbed toes on their feet. Well, Hired said them boys can catch, trap, skin, wear, and eat any kind of critter no demand. They can outrun, outswim, outsmart, and pert near whoop any critter too. <laughs> them boys is a mess, I tell you, and a handful to boot. Well, what you gonna do with your cousins, asked Buster. Well, before Festus could tell them, up walked the poor boys. Huzzabelle and the rest of the boys said howdy, and Buster offered up some coffee to them. When all of them got settled, Huzzabelle and Matuzzabelle had a mite of a run-in with a grizz. He abiding, said Matuzzabelle, a rogue for sure. Cousabelle said they was a going to skin a cat and skin a hay for sure. That there buyer ain't done in, uh, he done done in many a cabin and kept too many hay to stock to count. Something got to be done by him, said Huzzabelle. He was a seed high tailing up Big LaGrew to the refuge and we was a tracking him. Well, Hired asked Huzzabelle if they needed a hand. Well, Huzzabelle said Hired was uh, said Hired was known far and wide for his and ways with critters and we sure appreciate him and any of the boys that wanted to come along. Since they had the time and their shooting irons, all the boys said they'd tag along with them for a spell. The boys broke camp and headed on out with Cousabella leading the way. It was kind of funny with the trail and all, with that grizz turning south and then back up north a ways. That's when they see the deer ripped to pieces and half it. Like one swipe of the grizz's paw about took off his and hate. He's a big one for sure, said Matuzzle Bell. He's a gonna be a mite to handle, I'd say. Boys, we need to be on our toes with this air bar. We don't rightly, ha rightly have grizzes down this far south, you know. Wonder where he come from, says Walter. Well, that's a fair question, said Huzzabelle, but we know he's here and we gotta do something about him. All the boys tracked that there grizz till dark and then made camp for the night. All the boys got to hashing about how that grizz come to be him. Well, after chewing the ragging a bit and Jesse bringing out a quart of old McBrayer, the boys turned in for the night and planned on getting an early start in the morning. Round about 2 a.m. in the morning, Buster woke up when he heard something prowling about the camp. Then all hell broke loose. The boys had three tents set up. One each for each set of triplets and a bigger one for Buster, Jesse, Hire, and Walter. The first tent to get hit was the Poe Boys, then the Fernie Holes. By then, Buster and Walter had their rifles and shotguns out and began to fire at the huge, ghastly behemoth of wreaking havoc on the camp. Buster was a taking dead aim when he got bowled over and knocked up again a big old white oak tree. Walter unloaded on the grizz with his shotgun and peppered him good. That caused the grizz to light on out lickety split. That double alt buck do a job on a feller. Jesse fired up the lantern, stoked the fire, and began to take stock of the damage. Huzzabelle was clawed up right smart and so was Fergus. The other boys were scratched up some and bruised a bit, but otherwise all right. All the boys gathered round Huzzabelle and Fergus and began to doctor them up. They was a bleeding right smart, but the brothers stanched the flow of the bleeding and bandaged them up after putting some moss from one of the trees on. 
It didn't look good, Cousin Bell allowed. That Grizz was stalking them for sure. Well, Fergus and Cousin Bell couldn't walk out the woods, that's for sure. Well, Jesse had his and sat phone with him and said he would call in for help in a helicopter. Now, y'all got to understand this is on down later on in life where they had such things as a satellite phone and the boys would grow. So I want you to know how this all come about. They all know each other since they was me out of grasshopper, so that wasn't nothing to that. Well, anyway, Jesse called in for the helicopter. And Buster and the boys didn't get that much time to spend together, and this here camping trip and hog hunt was taking some time off of reliving the days when they was youngins. They figured on killing a hog or two and having a barbecue when they got home and having all the families come over. Well, wasn't going to be no hog killed, that was for certain on this here trip, I tell you. Jesse said he would call the game and fish and find out all he could about this here rogue grizzly. They just didn't fully understand all they knowed about their grizz, and they needed to get a handle on what all was going on. Now, Cousin Bill was fit to be tied and said he was going after that grizz right then and there. They done hurt and tried to kill his and Ken, and he wasn't going to stand for it. He told Jesse to call his and Paul Roosevelt and bring his and dogs. He wanted the walkers and blue ticks and both his Karelian bear dogs, Andre and Contrary. Cousin Bell said he'd kill out there a bar by himself. Now hold on, Cousin Bell. Let's just think on this a minute, said Howard. I know you is some upset, but we got to be smart about this. That bear ain't dumb as you can see. Let's get the boys fixed up, pack home, uh, back home and get our big game rifles and equipment and your dogs and plan on staying as long as it takes. Well, my cousin Bell come to cousin Bell and told him that Hired was right and they would start out as soon as they got outfitted up. Well, Jesse come up and give cousin Bell a snort or old McBrayer and said to him that they needed to tend to the wounded and would get after that there grill soon enough. Well, everybody settled down and tended to Fergus and cousin Bell and settled in to wait for the dogs and equipment. About three hours later, the helicopter landed in a clearing and picked up Fergus and Huzzabell. Roosevelt Poe sent word that he would be there first light in two days and to tell Cousabell to hold tight to them. Tell him his paw said that. Well, after Fergus and Huzzabell was took to the hospital, the boys began to get back word from the game and fish and police. The report read, The bear was trapped up in northern Alaska by poachers. He been scouted and was purportedly the world's largest bear. A Chinese concern paid them one million dollars for the bear. On the way to the port of embarkation to China, two of the poachers were apprehended, but two more got away with the bear in a truck. At an overnight rest stop in Arkansas, the bear escaped and killed the other two poachers. The bear has been missing for six weeks. The bear is extremely dangerous and should be hunted only by professionals. Please contact your local police or game and fish department if you have information on the whereabouts of the bear. Whoo, what a report! Well, Jesse also said the other two poachers give up the name of the Chinese that hired them. The authorities was handling that part of it. The poachers that was caught said that that bear was near about 14 foot tall and around about 2,000 pounds. They had a special cage built for him. They baited him with two goats and a cow over a month time. They had to get a dozer to drag him on out to the road and load him in a box truck after they trapped him. They tranquilized the bear to keep him quiet and then put it in his and food and water to keep him calm. Reckon that bear was mattering a wet hen when he come to. They said it looked like the bear broke the lock on the cage when the poachers opened up the back to feed and water him and then he killed the two poachers and ripped them apart. Well after hearing the report the boys in the old day was in for it for sure. Cousin Bell went plumb stone cold and just couldn't wait till his and Paul got there with his and dogs. Well days later at first light Russell Bell Poe come into camp with the dogs and equipment. The boys' paws rounded up all their guns and equipment they needed and sent it along with them. Riding up beside Roosevelt Pole was Big Mike Young on his and Black Ebony. 
Big Mike said he heard about all the ruckus and figured they might need an extra hand, so he just skied out along down and met up with Roosevelt. You're sure welcome, Big Mike, said Buster, and we is going to set out as soon as we can. Well, Buster introduced Big Mike to the poles and ferny holes, and Big Mike said he had hunted every kind of critter and bar in North America and figured he might be of some kind of help with them. Well, Cousin Bell, he said he sure enough appreciated him coming and wouldn't mind some advice, but he was going to kill that bear even if he had to do it with his own two hands. I seed your rifles and shotguns, and I brung some special loads for them, said Big Mike. A bar that big would take some knockdown power, boys. Well, Big Mike give all the boys ammo for their guns and said they would be good to go. Now, normal ammo just wasn't going to stop a bear that big. Well, all the boys thanked Big Mike and went to gathering up their gear to hate on out to the trail. Well, Cousin Bell called Honor and Contrary over to him and went to a talk of them two dogs like they was people. Them two dogs stayed by Cousin Bell's side from then on. Well, Cousin Bell turned loose the walkers and blue ticks after giving them a scent from the fracas two nights past. The dogs lit out with everybody there following them. They tracked north for two weeks up to the Ozarks. On the way, the dogs bayed and Cousin Bell went on in to see what all the dogs come up on. There was a den back up in the side of Mount Magazine and Cousin Bell said he was a going in. That got Matuzzabell and Ruzzabell right excited, but there wasn't no stopping Cuzzabell. That boy had blood in his and eye, I tell you. Well, directly Cuzzabell come out and said it was a sight for sure. A sow black bear was tore all to pieces defending her cubs. The cubs crawled back into a corner under a rock overhang in the den, and the grizz couldn't get to them, but he sure enough at that sow after he killed her. The cubs was brung out of the den and Jesse called the game and fish department and told them where they was and to come and get them. Well, two days later, whilst on the trail, they found an elk, that's elk, that had been killed in that home. There was uh, known to be a mountain buffalo that had escaped in the mountains and had never been caught. But everybody just forgot about the critter till they come up on it three days later. The grizz ripped it to pieces, and you could see where he even bit his and hayed with the brain of showing. Now that buffalo was near about 2,000 pounds itself, and tougher than wet leather. But it twerked no match for the grizz. They caught up with that grizzly at the Arkansas-Missouri line. He was bedded down in a cave in the mountains with little or no access for the men to get to him and kill him. Big Mike Young called over to Cousin Bell and told him he brung along some firepower and wanted him to use it if and he come up on that there grass. He was going to need it, he said. You just don't know the power of them critters, he told them. I've seen them keep coming after four slugs in the heart and six thirty-eights in the mouth. Our Indian guide up in Alaska never said much, but some of the boys I hunted with asked what kind of rifle he used after he had them a side in their scopes. He said a 600 Holland and Holland. Then they asked him why that gun. He said cause they don't make one no bigger. That is the respect he had for them critters. Well Big Mike said he would back up Cousin Bell or any of the rest of the boys with his an H&H &H shotgun with special loads. He then showed all the boys guns and ammo. Well I gotta tell you a little something about Big Mike. That boy was trained, and as a gunsmith, one of the best in the world. He was trained by Fred Shaw, which he did her mackerel now, went on past and met his maker. But Fred taught him when he was just a tyke, you know. And uh, Fred didn't cotton to too many people, but Mike just kept coming over. He was kind of a neighbor-like and just kept coming over and was really interested in guns and shells and things like that and how all the logistics about firearms and and ammunition. So he knows guns and ammunition. And when he tells them that they're going to need firepower, they're going to need it. And as I said, the boys hunted every kind of critter in North America. Well, the boys took turns on watch for the bear and to come out of his and den all through the night. He didn't budge. Cousin Bell said he was a bringing this and hunt to an end. He took up the 700, that's a Holland and Holland, 
and had his in Arkansas toothpick on his inside with the 500 pistol on his and hip. Biggest one to make, you know. He called up his and dogs and sicked them on that grizz, but he held off his and Karelian bear dogs, honoring contrary. The walkers and blue ticks bayed where the bear was treed. They'd run into the entrance and run back out so as not to get hurt or killed by the bear, but to just aggravate him enough for him to chase after them. That didn't work at all. Next, the boy set fire in the entrance to try to smoke the bear out, and that didn't get him to move neither. A body could hear that bear a snorting and a bellering like he was a goading him to come after him. Well, that is exactly what Cousin Bell said he was going to do. His and Paul Rosabelle was sure enough, again, uh, him a doing that, I tell you, but Cousin Bell had his and mine set on killing that bear. Well, Cousin Bell hollered for Honor and Contrary to come up to his inside. He leaned down and talked to them dogs just like uh, he knowed they understood every word he was a saying. Then they went up to the entrance to the den. Well, Big Mike backed him up and stood his and ground right behind Cousin Bell. All the boys and Cousin Bell was there too with all their guns aimed at the entrance. About that time, Cousin Bell said something to the dogs and they lit out lickety split into the cave. Then all manner of hell broke loose. Cousin Bell would holler or whistle and the dogs would come back to him. Then he'd send them back in. Well, after all that carrying on and trying to get that bear out of the cave, Cousin Bell would bring them back out. That went on about 20 minutes. Till one of the dogs come back out, bloody as all get out, but the other one was still in there and you could hear the buyer a bellering something crazy. It seemed that one of the dogs, Contrary, finally got the other in Henry and opened it and he went to work on that there bear. But Contrary got swatted pretty good and was bleeding something fierce when he come out. Well, that done it. Cousin Bell run into the cave and then you heard both barrels of that 700 go off. Then you heard the 500 pistol fire all six shots. Henry run out the cave and was clawed up pretty good too, but still wanted back in the fight. But Rosabelle had to keep him out. Big Mike and Buster led the way into the cave with the rest of the boys right on their tails. It was the dangest bloodbath you ever seen. The Grizz was dater and the doornail on the ground with his and legs over Cousin Bell. They didn't know if and Cousin Bell was dead or alive. Then he hollered to get them off of him. All the boys run over and had a heck of a time rolling that bear off of Cousin Bell. When Cousin Bell got out from under the Grizz, he had blood all over him. His an Arkansas toothpick was stuck in the Grizz's throat to the hilt. The Grizz took both barrels in the heart from the 700 and six shots to the hade and heart and still kept a coming. My cousin Bell run up under the bar and put his knife plumb through his and goozle. As soon as cousin Bell got up, they seed he was clawed up some and bit on his shoulder, but that didn't stop cousin Bell from starting to skin that Grizz right then and there. Whilst he was taking the heart, he asked after the dogs and Cousin Bell said they was wounded but would pull through. Whilst they was attending to Cousin Bell and the dogs, Jesse called a game and fish and police and told them Cousin Bell killed the bear. Well, Cousin Bell told all the boys and his and Paul that he would kill that bear, and he did. Well, I'm going to finish skinning him out and make a bear rug out of him and mount his and hay. Everybody just shook their heads at that, I tell you. That Cousin Bell wasn't short on courage, that's for sure. Well, Hired said he wasn't uh, gone into that cave for loving or money. And the other boys say they wouldn't either unless they had to. Well, Hired asked Cousin Bell just what all he told them dogs of his. Henry and Contrary. First off, I told them I loved them. And then I scratched their old heads and told them to mind me now. They had to work as a team and not to give up even if they was hurt. I told them to mind me when I hollered and whistled for them. Well, they done exactly as I learned them to. Them dogs ain't got no quit in them, and I'm their family. We is all going to heal up even if we had to take a mite of a lick, licking. And we got that old mean cuss, though. Well, Cousin Bell went on back into the cave and finished his and skinning and throwed pieces of bar to each one of the dogs for a job well done. About three months later, Cousin Bell and the rest of the Poles and Fernie Hole boys, too, come over to Buster's place, and he called the rest of the boys over along with Big Mike. He done made bar claw necklaces for all of them and give each one of the boys one of them. Cousin Bell told Big Mike that he would do to ride the river with and he had shot a lot of guns, but that 700 was something else. He appreciated him letting him use it. 
If it hadn't been for them two shots, he would have been a goner. With that being said, Cousin Bell give Big Mike the Hayden Mount of the Grizz. Well, there was a barbecue after all, but it wasn't wild hog, but some they had butchered in fall last year. All's well, it ends well, I reckon, said Buster, as the po' boys left out for home a-hollering. See you next hunting cedars. But there's gators in the bow. Y'all have a good evening. Buster signing out to you, and have a blessed day.